All right. Hello and welcome to another live sales chat. My name is John Golden from Pipeliner CRM and Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine. I'm joined by my colleague, Martha Neumeister, who is in lovely Vienna, Austria today. She's going to be looking after the Twitter chat. For those of you who are not familiar with our format, we have a live conversation here but also a Twitter chat. So the hashtag is hashtag sales chats. Just go in there, join in the conversation and Martha will uh, keep that going. And if something interesting comes up, she'll interrupt us. Today I'm joined from Illinois by Daniel Strunk. Hey Daniel, how you doing? Good morning, John. How are you today? Yeah, great. And Daniel serves as the managing director of the Center for Sales Leadership at DePaul University a program dedicated to producing the next generation of sales professionals. And it's the largest program of its kind in the United States. So we wanted to talk today about the subject of developing tomorrow's sales professionals. And and, and Daniel has a particular um, point of view on this and the program he's built. Uh, he has put technology and customer relationship management as a central component of the program. So let me ask you that for a start, Daniel. Um, you know, a lot of salespeople think, oh, well, technology, you know, that's something that uh, when I join a company, whatever technology they have, you know, I'll figure it out or whatever. Why do you make technology and CRM an integral part of actually training tomorrow's sales professionals? So that we, we try to be a partner-driven program. And mm -hmm. our partners have, uh, have the opportunity to engineer into our curriculum those attributes or competencies that they'd like salespeople to have. When we began our program, we began by asking our business partners, what were those attributes or competencies they wanted? And category and um, customer relationship management was one of the most important elements. The ability to work with Salesforce automation in a variety of technologies um, was critical for them. The companies like 3M, have established mm -hmm. a real need for their people to be able to process information and to inform throughout such a large organization. CRM is essential. So when we thought about developing a program that satisfied partners needs, we built the sales strategy and technology course to communicate first and foremost, why sales would require technology. Mm -hmm. It, it's a bit like the choice of a CRM system. You choose uh, objectives and goals, strategies and tactics before you address what technology you select. So too did we have to put in the work to design this course in establishing how sales relies on technology to be more productive. And then finally, to choose technologies to inform our students that would make them more universally uh, acceptable and competent to work in uh, a sales organization. Right, so right. It's it's your, your, it's your, your business your partners, partners, it's the companies who will be hiring these students who are driving um, this, uh, this component of it because they want to have technology savvy, they want to have people understanding what CRM does for the business and does for them individually. Uh, so that's a that that's a that, that's a bit of a change, isn't it? Um, over the last number of years, maybe from a lot of organizations who maybe wouldn't have put technology at the forefront. Uh, I think if we looked the last ten years, you would see a major change in the attitude towards CRM in particular. Um, adoption rates have come up because systems have become less complex. Um, I, I believe that uh, adoption rates are also increasing because we are working with CRM technology more appropriately in, in sales channel. And I believe that the ability to begin that communication at university level has had a lot to do with improved adoption rates. Mm -hmm. I hear so many stories about our students going to work where they have CRM skills and they become leaders almost immediately. And it's that kind of story. First, it warms your heart to, to hear sure. that. But more than that, it says that, and as we tell our students, volunteer for everything uh, when you get into the workplace because you'll gain exposure to individuals whom you wouldn't normally come into contact with perhaps for years. 
But right. as they as they are asked their opinion and as they begin to um, support and show how these skills can affect performance, it's a great demonstration, A, for why hiring at universities is helpful, but more than that, how salespeople who are informed about these systems and have the proper attitude towards adoption of them can really move the needle on sales productivity. Yeah, so that's so that's a uh, that's a really interesting you know concept that you've just um, outlined there about the fact that the students then coming into the workforce, you know, they've grown up in your program, say using CRM, using technology, understanding at a very fundamental level the benefits to the organization and to themselves of leveraging this technology. And they actually then can almost become evangelists when they're brought into the organization. So they're almost agents of agents of change at a very young age. They are. And it, it, that concept of volunteering for everything mm -hmm. has stood them in good stead. By, by that, I mean, when you have an opportunity to be a leader at such a young age, when you have the ability to teach as an individual just coming into an organization and people look over your shoulder and say, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. it makes a difference in the way that A, you're received, the value that people place on you. Uh, it, it's a, it's a short-term win for students to be integrated into um, an organization. That's a great way to integrate into the workplace. And it shows that they've got the, the right attitude to uh, to be productive. So with the with the organizations that you work with, the, the business partners, they're obviously seeing a huge benefit in recruiting from university programs like yours, um, which are, which unfortunately today aren't as common as they should be, right? Um, but what are some of the what are some of the other benefits that uh, these organizations see in in having a conveyor belt of well qualified young students coming out of a program like yours? I can sum it up in two words, work ready. Right. And, and what I mean by that is students should be able to be employed and not take eight months to a year to get up to speed. We'd like to think that exposure to the subjects that they are confronted with here at university prepare them to be productive from day one. So whether it's an understanding of sales models or whether it's the fact that they've been selling products and services as they matriculate through their education, because we challenge them to do that in every one of our courses, so that they actually have the real experience in working with big data, um, being able to digest and introduce analytics into sales. Um, mm -hmm. I think teaching them an approach that will make them productive day one um, improves the ROI for our business partners who support programs at the collegiate level. Yes. Yeah, so, uh, so on that idea of um, being more analytical, right? Uh, so let's face it. Like traditionally, yes, there were there are salespeople who have been analytical, but there's been a lot of salespeople who've been, shall we say, you know gut instinct players <laughs> and and maybe uh you know not relied on on analytics and data so much so uh, what you're doing here is this this technology acumen and this analytical acumen that you're giving giving them you're really helping to um, not just give them the tools, but kind of professionalize the profession, if that's not an oxymoron, but um, <laughs> we'd, like, we'd like to think that we are encouraging sales 2.0 to happen. And mm. we know that there will be a sales 3.0. But today, right. sales 2.0 is about working at the speed your customers need to be supported. Mm. At. And so we're working with communicating and responding to customers within minutes, it's not hours any longer, it's within minutes. So it's about speed, uh, it's about accuracy and professionalization. We know that so much of the buying process happens before the sales representative gets involved. Mm -hmm. well, I've heard estimates anywhere from 60 to 70% of the buying process has been completed when the salesperson is first informed and brought in. 
that means that the salesperson is no longer the principal communicator of information about product that's mm -hmm. done online. What they have to be is an individual that can create value by putting services and products together in the correct perspective. They can create value by showing the business analytics to prove the, the purchase case. So sales 2.0 is about that professionalization. It's about acceleration. And it's about the change in role for a sales representative to be the individual that marshals the resources of his team mm -hmm. and that of the customer's team. So when we talk about relationships, that's it's not the old perspective of relationships. Mm -hmm. It is a handshake and a slap on the back. It's about managing the relationship between companies. So that's a major change in the way that salespeople are looked at. And then finally, to do that work, you've got to be able to integrate between sales and marketing. Mm -hmm. We think you make a sales call for one of two reasons, to educate or to be educated. The yeah. language of that education is analytics and math. And so we, we ask our students to embrace it instead of avoid it. Right. So that uh, and, and, and another um, great point you raise here. So during their time, you know, doing um, at the sales program, they're obviously learning how to leverage different resources, how to, if you like, project manage their, you know, their their job, their profession, um, and interact with organizations. And let's face and let's face it. Also, I mean, in most sales nowadays, you know, complex sales. I mean, you're selling to more than one person. You're not so the old relationship, just one on one, me and you, sure. is gone. So, do you find that the that the work that they're doing in your program then makes them uh, well equipped to be able to marshal resources and manage relationships with multiple people in a sale? Um, okay, so that's an interesting question because you're talking about influencing people beyond your, beyond mm -hmm. your buyer. And yeah. that's the role of analytics, the ability to demonstrate long-term value, if you will. And those facts are typically shared up the line to justify a purchase. Mm -hmm. And so when we ask them to think about solving business problems, it it goes along with sales models such as SPIN that talk about asking sure. the appropriate questions to the appropriate person. In our instance, we're talking to them about demonstrating competitive advantage and value for their customer, where that gets communicated and how that affects the sale long term is going to put them in the best possible position to influence the sale, or as we'd like to put it, a purchase occasion. Mm -hmm. So some other interesting um, things that I'd like you to share with the audience, because you know there may be some people out there, maybe, maybe there are some people out there who've been in sales for a long time, uh, maybe there are management positions, and they're like, yeah, well, you know, you can't really learn this stuff in college. You know, you have to go to the, you really have to attend the University of Hard Knocks. You have to get doors slammed in your face and all of that. But tell us a little bit about the success rates of your graduates when they go into these organizations. Okay, so so we've been maintaining metrics on that for some time. We know that our students are 70% uh, more productive from the first day of employment than students that don't go to uh, university programs. We also know that they're promoted about 75% more often or um, they are more likely to be promoted. And students in our program are still with their original company. 80% of them are still with their original company three years later. But they've been promoted once or twice and that's well ahead of the average. So mm -hmm. our students have the metrics that prove that they are more successful. And I'd only add one more thing. We ask our students to sell through the entire curriculum. Right. Start as juniors. They may have an internship with one of our business partners for the summer where they're actually working full time in a sales capacity. When they come back, they're challenged in their courses to actually sell within them. So today I have students waiting outside my office <laughs> waiting to come in and give sales presentations uh, within a, a business simulation. And mm -hmm. that simulation 
requires them to understand a sales model, uh, identify the compelling reasons for a buyer to take action, and then in a simulated purchase situation, do that do that work and and close the sale. But in our other courses, students are actually selling services, or they're they're in an inside sales course where they're creating value by selling season tickets for sports teams. They actually do the work before they graduate. And that lends itself to, to being well prepared and being supported and promoted long term. Yeah. So, so anybody who's listening to this, who you know, maybe who's a parent or who has kids who are you know starting thinking about their future and all of that. Uh, there's a statistic, and it escapes me right now, about uh, the percentage of people whose first job out of college is in sales, right? Um, because let's face it, um, people come out of college with a variety of different degrees, and then the reality hits them, and then the only job they the only job they can find is in sales. So. Uh, it's something that people might want to consider about the fact that uh, here is something that has actually been taught as a profession traditionally hasn't been right. You know, unlike marketing, like every college in the universe has a marketing program, and yet the the ratio of sales to marketing people is the opposite, right? Uh, absolutely correct. And I think the figure you were looking for is eighty percent of marketing graduates will take a sales job yeah. first. <laughs> For their first position, and incidentally, forty percent of them fail in the first year. Right. Well, that is because they've taken a job, not chosen a career. Right. So exactly. Much, so much of what we do, and my advice to those parents would be, to introduce students to the types of careers that are available today. And some of that research isn't so easy. And when you think about, oh gosh, from the time that I graduated from college in the Stone Age. <laughs> which was which was in the 70s, uh, we were being told that salespeople would no longer be necessary by 1980, 1985. Right. That proved to be an improper um, uh, forecast, if you will. Uh, today, salespeople will be with us. They are going to evolve and change. They, I, I think their role is going to be far greater in an organization. I think their influence and the need for salespeople has never been greater. Consider what's happening in our industries where consolidation is a trend, regardless mm -hmm. of business. You can look at banking, you can look at airlines, you can look at the consumer packaged goods world, where we had hundreds of customers before, and now most of the business is done by eight or nine basic companies. And that allows you to focus on particular accounts and and drive your marketing efforts through accounts, which leads to accounts being far more important. And the people that are going to manage those accounts are sales folks. And so how they drive marketing projects as well as sales projects through these very, very large customers that influence these companies, it's the reason I believe in sales for the future. Yeah, and, and I couldn't agree more. And, um, you know, we've been here in the same for years. I came out of college in the Bronze Age, so just slightly after you, <laughs> <laughs> but not too much. <laughs> but, um, but yeah, and I think um, you know, part of it is recently with, uh, you know, with subjects like artificial intelligence, et cetera, you know, there's been a lot of these uh, futurists again who are predicting, like, you know, the death of the salesperson 3.5 or whatever. Uh, um, it's been predicted um, a number of times, as you say, over the over the decades. Um, but the reality is, at the end of the day, that despite all of these um, advances in technology, you still need a savvy salesperson to interpret the data and to use the tools effectively to manage an account or sell to somebody. Right? Without question, it, I, I hate to. I hate to. Integrate or or to uh, or to put it simply, but if you think of the sales representative or the salesperson and increase their responsibility, they're the transmission that 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 affects influence of, of customer and also company. And I think that that role will become increasingly important as the size of your business partners grow, your customers grow, and your organizations grow in response, and there will be a balance, I hope. Mm -hmm. In the middle of it all will be that individual that controls the relationship and flow of ideas and the creation of value. 
that's a sales representative. Yeah, and obviously, um, what you're what you're creating with your program with the technology aspect is you're um, creating somebody who is able to leverage the tools to their benefit, right? And really get the maximum benefit out out of the technology. So the combination of technology and savvy salesperson put together to uh, to for a winning combination, right? Uh, true, uh, and it's it's also a mentality. Mm -hmm. um, because as sales students embrace, and let's let's be clear, um, we are teaching millennials today. Millennials' technological skills are superior. Mm -hmm. They embrace technology. They work very easily with it. They learn it quickly. The attitude that Big Brother is watching you is one that we try to present as the only way that you are going to be able to progress is to secure the support of senior management. Right. The way that you do that is to communicate through these systems. So it isn't Big Brother is watching you. It's how are you going to enlist Big Brother's support if you don't uh, give them the information necessary to help you. And mm -hmm. as we teach CRM at university, and we demonstrate to them how that information passing up to senior management does provide them the support and does allow them to manage more effectively, um, they begin to understand the power of these systems. And it's really about their, their need to communicate, their need to be a to 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 be part of the the culture and the system, uh, the ability to be coached to improve their performance is dependent on mm -hmm. the ability to analyze progress through individual stages of a sale. So we need to be able to indoctrinate them into uses of the technologies because it's the only way to stay productive long term. Yeah, yeah, I know. I couldn't agree more. And I think it's great because you're bringing in a generation into the workforce who um, hopefully will embrace the, the technology for the reasons that you've said, as opposed to, you know, where we've had the traditional pushback for CRM. It's like, why would I share any information? Because I'll be held accountable for it, right? <laughs> they, correct. Yeah, yeah. And if they don't know about this deal, then they can't ask me about it. <laughs> well, unfortunately, that's that's not the case for people coming into organizations. It shouldn't be the case, or the attitude that people take that have been in organizations. You see that you see companies that are adopting CRM systems in a major way, and you look at them and the need for them to have their sales professionals support them with data to manage this business so they can be more successful. It couldn't be more clear um, why these systems are being embraced today. And so um, as, as we're bumping up against time here, what are, what are other changes that you see in the role of the sales professional? Do you see other changes on the horizon? Any, anything else that we should be on the lookout for? Um, I, I would like to, to say that organizational leadership from the sales organization is something that we're going to see more and more. Um, mm. the, the ability to read customers and to understand uh, customers' needs, the opportunity to become engaged with shopper marketing and customer marketing programs and leading those directives are going to lead us to, to a senior management track for sales professionals. I see that as a major trend and a major difference in the way that we, we've looked at sales and sales capabilities. The need to educate people beyond the technique and mm -hmm. embracing the analytics makes a major difference in the capabilities of these people long term. And whether you teach it at an undergraduate level or you teach professional selling at a graduate level where people may not have the opportunity to secure training, but continuing education is important. And they're exposed to more significant um, sales education. Uh, right. Then I believe that we've got more leaders coming from sales, more senior management involved with a sales background. And I believe that customer sensitivity will lead us to greater success.
Yeah, I'm, uh, absolutely. Uh, I like that idea. Uh, obviously, there's a lot of executive education out there, but there's very rarely, I, uh, or maybe I don't think I've ever seen it, do you see executive education really focused in on the sales aspect? Well, we, we, have, a, we have a graduate program at the University at mm -hmm. DePaul, and uh, we're one of six schools across the country, but mm -hmm. there is more executive education done uh, in the area of sales than formal MBA uh, program inclusion. But even so, um, very little at the graduate level, mm -hmm. but I see that traffic uh, being more important and increasing. Yeah, no, I would absolutely think it, it has to, um, for all the reasons that you've outlined. Okay, so we're coming up against the end of our time here. And what we always like to ask our guest before the end is to give us your supercharged tip. And that is, what do you do every day, Daniel, to set yourself up for success? That's an interesting question. Uh, I think the motivation is, is key to, for me, it's, Understanding my job is about promoting students. It's mm -hmm. about educating and preparing them to be ready. So my my motivation is how do I how do I connect the brightest and best students with my business partners? And that coaching and relationship work that I do, A with partners and with students to make that marriage, that's a pretty interesting thing to do during a day. And so I get motivated just by thinking about how I can help that process occur. Yeah, that's great. Listen, um, I really appreciate you joining us today. Daniel Strunk, DePaul University, the Center for Sales Leadership at DePaul. Uh, I highly recommend, especially any parents out there or you know, young people watching, I uh, highly recommend that you check them out and look at the sales programs that are offered and think about sales as a career. Um, as a profession and a career, um, not just something that you uh, maybe later on will trip or, de or fall into by accident, but here's a chance to actually proactively choose a career that, uh, as we've heard, is, is certainly not going to go away and it's going to get even more important. So thanks, Daniel, for those in insights today. You're welcome, um, John, for having me. Yeah, absolutely. Thank you, Martha, for running the Twitter chat there in Vienna. And uh, my name is John Golden, Sales Pop Online Sales Magazine, Pipeliner CRM. We'll see you for another live sales chat very soon. Bye, all. Bye.